एवरी वन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वीकली सीरीज ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंट पर्सनैलिटीज वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द पर्सनैलिटीज दैट हैव बीन इन न्यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर वीक सो वी शैल बी कवरिंग अबाउट नीरज चोपड़ा मदर टेरिसा फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर लाल बहादुर शास्त्री वनू रम्मा पंदुरंग खान खोजे अन्ना मनी एंड उस्ताद बिस्मिल्ला खान before i move any further in our discussion i want you all to pay attention towards a very crucial announcement with regards to the polity and ethics foundation course 2023 which began on 25th of august and you can still take admission admission is open for these courses for few more days also a new batch for public administration is going to begin on 25th of september you are going to be taught by nitin shiv hari sir in all three of them who is the founder and director of analyst ias and ex faculty from well known institutions to inquire further about the details regarding the course and the admissions you can reach out to us on the given numbers and you can even visit our office in the old rajendra nagar market new delhi now let's begin with our discussion so first of all we are going to talk about neeraj chopra he is in news because he has created yet another history for himself and the nation and has won lozen diamond league meet title in javelin throw again yet another a gold neeraj is native to the village of khandara in panipat district of haryana neeraj has been serving in the indian army since 2016 and is currently serving as a subedar in the rajputana rifles he was awarded the arjun award in 2018 he has also won india's 10th olympic gold medal this year it is worth mentioning that eight gold medals were won by men's hockey team before that and one gold medal was won, won by shooter abhinav bindra it was india's first individual gold medal and now neeraj chopra has got a gold medal thereafter he also has got a gold medal in other events as well like in 2018 jakarta asian games 2018 gold coast commonwealth games 2017 bhubaneswar asian championships 2016 guwahati shillong south asian games Now next up in our discussion is Mother Teresa. She is in news because it was her birth anniversary this week. Mother Teresa has left her home at the age of 18 and moved to Ireland and then to India where she lived for most of her life. Mother Teresa devoted most of her life working for poor and downtrodden people. She served as a teacher at the Loreto Convent School Eastern Calcutta for nearly 20 years and was appointed as its headmistress in 1944. The Bengal famine of 1943 had brought death and misery to the city and the August 1946 direct action day during the partition which was called by the Muslim League direct action day I hope you could recall that was the beginning of Hindu Muslim violence in the state of bengal because even in the bengal there was a muslim majority towards the east which now is bangladesh region so mother teresa experienced the call within the call during that time on september 10 1946 when she was traveling to loreto convent in darjeeling by train from calcutta for her annual retreat over there it made mother teresa realize that she was to leave convent and help the poor while living amongst them Mother Teresa began her missionary work with the poor in 1948. She replaced her traditional attire with a simple white cotton sari with a blue border. Mother Teresa then applied for Indian citizenship and spent several months in Patna to attain basic medical training at the Holy Family Hospital and then took off into the slums. Mother Teresa founded the Missionaries of Charity in 1950 to help the poorest. the charity took in increasing number of homeless children in 1952 mother teresa converted an abandoned hindu temple into the kali ghat a home for dying free for the poor 
द होम वॉज रीनेम्ड एज काली घाट द होम फॉर द प्योर हार्ट निर्मल हृदय दोज ब्रॉट टू द होम नॉट ओनली वर गिवन एडिकेट मेडिकल अटेंशन बट ऑल्सो द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू डाई विद डिग्निटी इन अकॉर्डेंस विद योर फेथ she was the recipient of more than 120 honors and awards during her lifetime including raman magase peace prize in 1962 and nobel peace prize in 1979 next in our list is lal bahadur shastri the former pm of india he is in news because rajnath singh has paid tribute to the former indian pm lal bahadur shastri in tashkent Lal Bahadur Shastri was born on 2nd of October 1904 Mughal Sarai a small railway town 7 miles from Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh He participated in the freedom movement since 1930 He joined the Kashi Vidyapeet Vidyapeet in Varanasi one of the many national institutions set up in defiance of the British rule Shastri was the bachelor's degree awarded to him by the vidya peet but has stuck in the minds of people as part of his name so it was not lal bahadur shastri his name shastri is not his surname his name is actually lal bahadur and shastri is a title that comes along with his bachelor's degree he was the minister in the union cabinet from 1951 to 1956 when he resigned taking responsibility for the railway accident and later from 1957 to 1964 he was india's second prime minister after jawaharlal nehru serving from 1964 to 1966 during shastri's brief prime ministership the country faced two major challenges while india was still recovering from economic implications of the war with china in 1962 india experienced failed monsoons drought and serious food crisis and presented a lot of other grave challenges the country also faced war with pakistan in 1965 shastri's famous slogan jai jawan jai kisan symbolized the country's resolve to face both these challenges Shastri's prime ministership came to an abrupt end on the 10th of January in 1966 when he suddenly died in Tashkent. So that is the significance of the place and that's why the tribute was being being paid by Rajnath Singh over there. Tashkent was part of the then USSR and currently is the capital of Uzbekistan. He was there to discuss and sign an agreement known as Tashkent agreement with Muhammad Ayub Khan the then president of Pakistan so that the war could be ended he signed an agreement with the Ceylon now Sri Lanka on persons of indian origin there in 1964 an endorsement for the import an endorsement of the importance of neighborhood he was the first person to be post hamasli awarded the bharat ratna in 1966 now The next person or personality we are going to discuss is Vannu Ramma. She is in news because she was the lone women chieftain of Rayal Seema and she remains forgotten by the history. So recently she is being recognized. A book was written on her story last year and this week it had its one year anniversary of the launch of the book and that's why we are going to know about her story between nine between 1781 and 1796 vanurama controlled the five durgams that is sub chiefdoms with sakrala padu serving as her administrative center she was reportedly born in pathuma dugu rekula kunta which is currently in the kadappa district and she wed virneni chinna narsimha naidu in nine in 1764 the family often made prayers at kalyana durgams vannuru swami temple in the anantapur area as a result of this word vannuru she began to be called as vannuramma since it was thought that she was a gift from the gods when she was born the malti kings and kadappa nawabs shivered at the mention of the name vannuramma Vanurama's family was attacked by other polygars and forced to flee 
towards Thippi Reddy Palle, where they took refuge in Chagalamadri Fort, where they remained for eight years before her husband passed away in 1780. When the Mysore Sultan had the released disciple Miru Sahib and the Matli king Ayappa Raju engaged in battle, invaded Sakerla Padu Durgam and stole the possessions of residents, Vanurama handled the sword. She assembled her troops, waged war and annexed the region back into her control in 1781. Even the Golconda Nawabs, through their Kadappa henchmen, Khadarwali Khan, strove in vain to subjugate her. At that point, they came up with a scheme to seduce her adoptive son and had her detained on false grounds. Treason charges were brought against the innocent Vanurama when she went to the Matli king's court to show her innocence. The Nawabs imprisoned her and gave her the cruel penalty of Korthi, which involves forcing a person to sit in a pointed tree, stump and being abandoned to perish. Vanurama died in full public view in the year 1718 of Salivahana Saka, which translates to August 16, 1796, that is 226 years back. So this was the story of the lone forgotten chieftain of Raya Sigma region, Vanurama. Now let's talk about Pandurang Khan Khoje. He is in news as Lok Sabha speaker, Om Birla, will be travelling to the Mexico to unveil statue of Pandurang Khan Khoje over there. Let's know about the background, why a statue is being erected for Pandurang Khan Khoje in Mexico. So Pandurang Sadashiv Khan Khoje, that was his full name, he was born in 1884 and died in 1967, had a close connection with Mexico, where he sought refuge due to his association with the radical pro-Indian independence Gadar Party. He was born in Varda, Maharashtra in the late 19th century, that is 1884. In the year 1884, Khan Koji decided to go to abroad for further training in revolutionary methods and militaristic strategy. After spending time with the nationalists from Japan and China, Khan Koji eventually moved to the US. He enrolled in college as a student of agriculture. In Mexico, during 1920s, he established Esculas Libres de Agricultura Mexico, free agricultural colleges where he successfully experimented with varieties of corn. Now let's talk about his contribution towards the freedom struggle specifically. He had an association with Gadar Party in the very first point I have mentioned the same. So he was one of the founding members of the Gadar Party established by Indians living abroad in 1914, mostly belonging to Punjab. He influenced Mexicans inspired by Mexican Revolution of 1910. He also reached out to Indians working on farms in the US with the aim of discussing the idea of Indian independence with them. There, he met with Mexican workers as well. He spread the nationalist ideologies. He reached out to Bhikaji Kama in Paris and met Vladimir Lenin in Russia, among other leaders, seeking support for Indian cause. However, as he was facing possible deportation from Europe and could not go to India, he sought shelter in Mexico, Green Revolution. He also researched corn, wheat, pulses and rubber, developing frost and drought-resistant varieties and was part of efforts to bring in the Green Revolution in Mexico. Now, don't confuse it with the Green Revolution of India. It was about Green Revolution in Mexico. The next in the sequence is Anna Mani. She is in news because Google has celebrated her 104th birth anniversary by changing the Google logo into the one inspired by Anna Mani. So, Anna Mani was born in 1918 and died in 2001. She was an Indian physicist and meteorologist. She retired as Deputy Director General of Indian Meteorological Department and further served as a visiting professor at Raman Research Institute. 
She made several contributions to the field of meteorological instrumentation, conducted research and published numerous papers on solar radiation, ozone and wind energy measurements. The next in the line is Ustad Bismillah Khan, the last personality today, but of course not the least, could be very crucial from your UPSC CSE perspective. So he was in news because of his death anniversary. Khan's contribution in taking King, in taking Shehnai to a global stage is unparalleled. Bismillah Khan's first big break came with the opening of All India Radio in Lucknow in 1938. It was Ustad Bismillah Khan who also played the Shehnai at First Republic Day celebration in 1950. Bismillah Khan was the first Indian to be invited to perform at the prestigious Lincoln Center Hall in the United States of America. He was conferred upon national awards like Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan and the Padma Vibhushan for his immense contribution to the field of music. In 2001, Ustad Bismillah Khan was awarded India's highest civilian award, Bharat Ratna. This is it for today's Personalities in News or Important Personalities session. I shall see you again next week with another such session. Till then, take care, stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining in.